dear love tuna uh, friends and family and listeners i'm happy to have christian de la herta here um let me introduce you real quick uh, to this very special guest of mine uh christian is a spiritual teacher a personal transformation coach and the leading voice in the breastwork community what actually ties us completely in with love tuna uh christian welcome Thank you, Sigma. I'm so happy to be on the, on the podcast with you. Yeah. What we should do is like we should uh, do like a little tune for our listeners real quick that we get in the same frequency. Yeah. One exhale, connecting from heart to heart. So we are talking coast to coast. So Christian is on the East Coast in Miami. We are in, in L.A., um, yeah, I was speaker on a very interesting summit, actually, that went over two weeks. It was last autumn. It was called Leaders Transforming Global Consciousness. It was a virtual summit, and I enjoyed it myself. I listened to a lot of other speakers, and I, I know that you had great success with this. You had a great feedback, and, and I thank you again for yeah, bringing stuff like this into, into yeah, uh, manifesting here that people can get really advice especially in these difficult times we have. Uh, I know that one of your core missions is to help catalyze a revolution of consciousness for the higher sake of humanity's evolution. So, I mean, this, this sounds, yeah, that's a lot, <laughs> what you have yeah. on your plate, but you're doing yeah, this for a very, very long time. So please give us a little bit more insight for our listeners. Yeah, I've been doing this work for over 30 years now, so a long time indeed. And what inspires my work, what drives it is paraphrasing Einstein, that you can't solve a problem from the same level of consciousness in which it was related, in, in which it was created. So when I look at the world and all the challenges that we're facing as a species and, and wonder about how we're gonna ever dig ourselves out of this hole that we have collectively dug ourselves into, the only way that I see out of that is it's it's thinking outside of the box. It's it's a evolution in consciousness, a, a spiritual revolution. And so I see my work as supporting people to do that, continuing to support myself to wake up and allow as many and, and to support as many people, other people as I can to do the same. And breathing is 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 a core thing because uh, what happened in the last like I would say even decades now in the last 10 years, people are getting way more aware of frequency, vibration, the law of resonance. And I mean, us, how we can get into resonance. One big key is one of the most physical, logical things what we do anyway, but we're not doing it consciously. And this is breathing. And, and you dedicated a lot of your work into breastwork per se. Um, can you give us a little bit more insight where uh, like literally spirituality mixes in with this physical phenomenon of correct breathing. Yeah. Um, and Thich Nhat Hanh, you know, the, the Buddhist teacher said something like the breath is what connects heaven and earth uh, through the human body. And, and, and that's what I also love and appreciate about the love tuner is that it does create that resonant uh, field. Um, the breath is, you know, it's, it's just amazing how, how quickly it works and how profoundly it heals. Um, it heals, I don't know, anything more effective in terms of healing past trauma. Um, it heals at multiple levels, not only emotionally and mentally, but spiritually and even physically. And I know that sounds too good to be true. For my more logical, scientific, skeptical mind, even when I say that 30 years into it, I know that it sounds too good to be true, but I can't argue with results. It works. Yeah, it yeah. works. And, and you, you know, you probably know that I came out of the psychotherapy tradition, my degrees in psychology, my dad was a psychiatrist. And when I discovered breath work 30 years ago, I jumped tracks, I never went for the PhD because of the fact that it works so quickly and, and yeah. at how quick and how and at the multiple levels in which it heals. Um, and the only way that I can understand that because I don't think the science is there yet in terms of understanding how it works. Um, it's, you know, it's what you're talking about is that, is that, that spiritual connection and in most spiritual traditions and even some secular languages, the same word, um, one word can mean spirit or breath, depending on how it's used, depending on context. Yeah. So like uh, in your new book, uh, Awakening um, the Soul of Power, 
yeah, because like uh, it's it's all about like self empowerment, self worthiness, and uh, and I uh, because like when I started on my journey with love tuna, there was one thing that came to my mind, and I said, self empowerment brings basically becoming your own guru. You know, you can heal yourself, but it all has to do with self awareness. And, and your new book, uh, Awakening the Soul of Power, is actually a beauty, beautiful guideline into the self-empowerment, self-worthiness. Uh, maybe you can give us a little bit of a downspiel, what it really means to not only look on the outside, but the journey inside. Yeah, it's, it's all about that, as, as you know. It's all about the inner journey, about connecting with ourselves, uh, about learning to, to accept and to honor uh, and to love ourselves. And, and from that, everything else will, will unfold. The thing about the, the empowerment part of it is that many of us have, I would say even most of us, have an ambivalent relationship to power. We, we want it, but we're afraid of it. And, and no wonder, you know, all we got to do is on, on any given day is turn on the news or, or glance through the headlines online and just witness multiple abuses of power like egregious abuses of power. And then so what good hearted person wants to do that? And then on top of that, we've been conditioned power corrupts and absolute yeah. power corrupts. Absolutely. But what they didn't tell us is that that phrase was originally taken out of context. It was intended to, to it was addressing political power, not interpersonal power that we're talking about. So combine that with the fact that we're, we're all been conditioned also to, to be afraid of the emotions, to run away from the emotions. We hate conflict. We avoid confrontation. We, we fear rejection. So put all that into a mix. And what happens is we end up giving away our power. We end up stuffing ourselves into small little packages um, and, and saying yes instead of no, which you know we might be feeling inside no, but we override that and we say yes. Uh, and put on a little fake smile and so it doesn't work yeah it doesn't work yeah yeah and, and this is this is what, what we are seeing is like um because like our slogan with love tune is always like you know connecting one heart by each tone each vibration each frequency so and and overall it's just basically going for your from your head into your heart yeah. and when people do this then everything else all the layers that have been projected on us fall apart because our hearts are curious, so there is no like whatever. There's no political belief system. There's no like no looks. There's nothing what you can charge on like a mind level because our hearts are always curious. So we humans are meant to connect and, and separation hurts us. And uh, it, yeah, and, 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 and I, I've seen this uh, with a lot of people when they open up their heart, a lot of emotions comes out. And, and when people start to cry and when, they, when trauma comes out, this is exactly because we are not supposed to hold our emotions, you know, like we are supposed to live our emotions. Yeah, and, and that's what I love both about breath work and your, your creation, the love tuner, is that it gets us out of the head and into the heart. And that also connects to the power conversation because we could say, you know, one of, we could talk about different kinds of power. Um, and, and the message for all of us is that there, there is a way that we can step into power without abusing it in a way that is a match and congruent with who we are. Yeah. And so one of the ways we can talk about it is that one of one, we tend to associate power with worldly power, people who have fame or money or, or part of some hierarchy like you know corporate ladder or religious hierarchy the thing about all those kinds of power is that they're external to us so they're they're fickle they're here today gone tomorrow whereas the other kind of power we're talking about spiritual power heart power that you're talking about is it's in each one of us and nobody can give it to us and nobody can take it away we are the only ones who can give it away yeah and so so the the process then is is it's it's you know, out of the heart and, and more into the, the, the heart power, which is actually more powerful. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, in your book, you, you touch actually four topics, and this is always so important for humans. Like, there's one thing, you feel toxic relation pattern. Negotiate power struggles successfully. Stop cheating yourself and playing small. I mean, and then like at the end, you know, conquer insecurity and unworthiness. I mean, all this is so related because if you're not well with yourself, 
you, you know, the next step is a relation, obviously. How can this doesn't work, obviously, you know what I mean? Because if you're not clear with yourself, you cannot be clear with anyone else, you know? Exactly. We, yeah, we can't expect anybody to respect us, to honor, to, to love us, or like really honor us uh, unless we do, unless we're doing to ourselves. Otherwise we're just going to attract however it is that we're holding ourselves. So it, it's almost a cliche to say that if you really want to have a relationship that works, if you want to really be loved, it's got to start by loving self. It's like, that's yeah. the very beginning. Yeah. And um, when, when, when you go into these patterns, like, like relationship patterns, uh, do you actually like when 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 you see those behaviors of people where they all trap into the same like it's it's literally it's toxic because and and the toxicity is what what is so scary because we kind of started living with this we we kind of like it became normal you know it became normal that fifty percent of all our relations end up in a in a divorce you know so I mean for me. Is like uh, in, in, and I had a you know very normal job, and then then I started love tuning, and and, and so on and so on. So I know all these facilities, which where you can trap into out of our society, but basically, what we are doing is um, we actually settle for so little already, you know, because we we totally busy, we totally ignore the the law of resonance. Yeah. So we do stuff what is not in resonance with us. Exactly, and and, and, I, and I and I think this is when 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 you start breathing and when you do this kind of work, you know, and you open up, I think then you also start the first time even feeling your own vibration, your own frequency, and yeah. then you know what is in resonance with you. Yes, yes, and and so so yeah, so many of us like it doesn't surprise me, like you said that. 50% of marriages end up in divorce. What what doesn't so what does surprise me is that 100% don't because we haven't been taught how to approach relationships, yeah. how to hold them, you know. And so if if we whenever we find ourselves approaching a relationship because we feel like they they're, they're going to make us happy or or they're going to fill something that's perceived by us that's missing here, hang it up. There's no way that anybody out there's going to make us happy. And how unfair to put that responsibility on somebody else. Like, you're going to make me happy. It's like, no, no, only only I can do that. Yeah. Um, and so that's, and, and so it goes back to the, the, the conversation about self-esteem, right? That's what we sell out because we don't value ourselves. We settle. Yeah. And, we, and we settle for relationships who are not a match. And so that's one of those unconscious, unhealthy relationship patterns that sometimes have us feeling like, like we're in the same boring movie, just with a different actor. Um, but it's, it's, it's the same pattern. So if we want to break these patterns and if we want to have a, a chance at relationships that really work, it's got to start within. And, and, and it starts with, with the work. Of, of digging in and facing ourselves. And sometimes it's not fun. In fact, I, I say that it's heroic to, to look within and to look at the stuff, at, 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 at our stuff that we put in the shadow that we don't want to look at. But, as, but just because we don't want to look at it doesn't mean it goes away. It's in there and it's having an impact on our behavior. So, so to me, there's no way around it. We've got to look at it. And it's nothing short of heroic to do that. And the rewards are infinite they're priceless because once we look at it and we do whatever we need to do to heal these patterns and go to those original sources of trauma um, and the misunderstandings from childhood that there was something wrong with us or or you know stuff that we misheard or that w was told to us and we bought bought it as truth it has nothing to do with with truth you know you know you know maybe our parents got divorced and to those little minds we we concluded wow how could daddy leave me daddy doesn't love me what's wrong with me yeah. It's a logical process, but it doesn't make it real. Yeah. And so then we spent the rest of our lives coming from those lies, from those misunderstandings that there's something wrong with us. And then we bring that, those beliefs into every relationship. So there's no way around it. We've, we've got to be willing to do the work so that we can then, our relationships can have a chance. And I mean, you have been doing over the years a lot of like uh, retreats, weekend retreats, uh, weekly retreats. Uh, and I mean, a lot of people come there and, and they really find relief because uh, you connect them to the power of their own breath and, and it grounds them. Uh, 
but you have been doing something uh, very outstanding, actually. And this goes into a full year. And this, I, I want to know a little bit more about um, your uh, developed coaching program. And you call it Adventures in Transformation. A year yeah, of thanks. discovery, uh, embodiment, and nurturing your soulful power. I mean, this this is like, yeah, I mean, the title itself is something where, where, where I said everybody needs to do it. There's, there's no way around it. Uh, but but this, this is a very long journey you're taking, actually, your, your clients and then people uh, that are following you. Yeah, I'll tell you how I landed on, on that format. Uh, because originally I was thinking thir a 30-day virtual program. And like, you know, like so many of us, I had to pivot and create online program because I haven't been able to have retreats since, since March or workshops. Yeah. Um, and so, and of course I'll go back to doing them as soon as we can. Um, but, but here's what I'm valuing about the, what I'm really appreciating about this year long program. My, I have a business coach and she asked me a question. I was struggling with what to put, cause I have so much content, what to put in the 30 day, what leave out, yeah. how to organize it. And she, she said, look, let me ask you a question. What would you be more, confident reassuring or guaranteeing results after 30 days or a year yeah. so it's clearly a year she goes look your work is deep it's not surface work yeah. you know so offer a year long and then i woke up two nights later in the middle of the night one of those like two in the morning zero to 60 wide awake and i saw it i saw how to lay it out and how to organize it so that's when i knew that that it was coming from a deeper part of me so what i'm loving about it is, is the fact that I can stretch out the teachings over a whole year and I can make them interactive. So kind of using some principles from, from app creation and app development and gamification. So piecemeal teachings, I can deliver the, you know, a little bit at a time each week, a little bit of content each week, and then make it interactive. So there, there's homework, there's, there's tasks, and I call them power practices or, or heroic tasks connected to each week's content. Um, and that's what's going to make people take it in deeper and apply it to their lives, which is which is what makes the teachings really land when we integrate them into our lives. Um, I'm also it allows me to put accountability systems. So every two weeks there there are coaching calls with me live, and then in the in, in between weeks they have accountability groups where you know triads they meet in, in dyads or triads to keep them doing what they said they would do. Um, and then I love that it, that I get to use content from all my retreats. So the first quarter, we 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 the theme is understanding the ego mind um, and what it means to live heroically. The second quarter is personal empowerment. How do we step into power in a way that's not about hierarchy, control, fear, force, domination, but a way that is that expression that we were talking about before that comes from within. Third quarter is relationships. Doing relationships consciously. Um, and removing obstacles to love within ourselves. And then the fourth quarter is life purpose. Like, what are we really doing here at a soul level, at a mission level? And how do we identify and let go of the, the subconscious patterns that also have us playing small um, and not really stepping into, into what we've come here to do? And, and also leadership is part of that. So, yeah, I'm really excited about this, this program. It just started last month. Yeah, very cool. No, I looked into it and I think, uh, yeah, people really need to experience this. And um, and quick fix is always good. You know, there's a lot of exercises out there. You can grab a love tuna, you can do a breathing exercise, but you are taking people really on a journey that can transform their entire life. And I mean, it starts always with self-awareness, the journey was in. No, I think uh, congratulations to this program. And I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm looking forward that you have a lot of followers on this. And people should check out for sure your homepage. It's soulfulpower.com. There's a lot of stuff from Christian, his uh, prior work, his prior books. And, uh, and I really can highly recommend this because it's a, it's a spiritual thing, but it happens on a physiological level and everyone will feel the benefits right away. Yes. Uh, yes. And, and, and I really thank you for having me on the show. It's a, it's a privilege and an honor. Um, and I look forward to when we can meet in person. Yeah, absolutely. Hey, Christian, thank you so much for your time. It's always a pleasure chatting with you. Keep up the good works. And yeah, let's educate people about the power of the breath and that we all, uh, you know, uh, live by the law of resonance. And then we're all yes. happy. 
Thank you Thank so you. much, Christian. Have Thank a wonderful you. rest of your day. Appreciate Thank it. You. Thank you. Bye-bye. Take care. Bye.